First blood. Thanks. Welcome everybody. My name is Navitz, representing my esports team, the Spluce Troop, and today I'm coming to you with a live gameplay video. And I'm not playing this game. I'm watching the rank one player, Excalibur, play Lone Druid. Now I watched him play a Lone Druid game the other day, and I was really impressed. So I want to see what build he goes for, and I want to see how he plays this. Now, the first thing I want to mention, we're going to watch him play this whole game and see what he does. But I think something that's going to be interesting to do, I think this will be an interesting type of analysis video to do since we're obviously watching from a third party perspective instead of trying to play the game and do analysis at the same time. So, first thing I want to point out is what his starting items are Orb of Venom, Quelling Blade, three tangos, or a set of tangos. But there's one thing that not a lot of people notice or do on Lone Druid, and it's super important. I want I want people to know how freaking important it is to do this. Buying a teleportation scroll with your last 50 gold on your bear. Now, your bear has a separate inventory slot for teleportation scrolls, and you can't pass teleportations from your Lone Druid to your bear. Uh, so that's super important for you guys to, to know and understand. Uh, so okay, let, let's let's watch this go down. We're gonna see what happened right here. Omni Knight came around, took a creep wave, pulled it outside here, and went back to this lane. So what does Excalibur do? Instead of just taking this creep wave and letting it go up, or sorry, instead of taking this creep wave and bringing it up here into tower, he walks it down into this jungle camp, farms the camp, farms the creep wave at the same time. Now he brings it back and he has the wave pushing into his tower. What does this mean? It means that he gets to control wave equilibrium. It means that he gets to deny farm from the Omni Knight. Uh, and it means that the Batrider can continue to play his position five role and continue to harass the Omni Knight while the wave pushes into him. So the more the wave is pushing into you, especially when you end up, uh, what's happening here? Where, where, we're missing, well, there he goes. Another hero's coming top. So Tiny has been bottom for a little while, he's coming top. But especially when this happens, when somebody starts solo for such a long period of time, you don't want to let them control the lane uh, equilibrium. You don't want them to be able to pull a, a creep camp from over here and walk this way and then just take it. And then you, you're stuck with this whole creep wave. You're denying it under tower and you're no longer able to, uh, to push it. And he actually just lost his bear. When I say push, sorry, I didn't mean push it. You're forced to push your wave. If this wave was to push here without him bringing it under this camp, he would have been forced to push the wave out because um, because the tower would have been hitting it as well. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Okay, the tower would have been hitting it as well. And now we have uh, another instance where he's trying to pull the wave back. He manages to keep some of his creeps here, but Omni Knight's going around in a circle. And this is gonna this is gonna happen. This is what you have to do if you're solo in a lane, or sometimes you just do it to if it's more beneficial for you to control lane equilibrium. Now he cuts down this tree. This tree right here is the only tree you need to cut down to get through this little path pathway. Uh, for those of you who didn't know that, if you buy a quelling blade and you need to run through here, cut down this one tree. You can also cut down this one tree right here to go up. Uh, and we're going to go back and watch what he does now. So, super interesting. I actually thought, I don't, I didn't know he was queuing these up for real, but he puts four iron branches on his main hero. I haven't seen that before. Oh, and they're going for the bear again. If he loses his bear right now, he's in serious trouble. Nope. He uses his savage roar to force the enemy away from him. But he now has, Omni Knight now has a double creep wave pushing under him. So, oh, here we go. This is what I wanted to show. Now, the bear has teleported home. He was low on health. He's teleported home. He's picked up his boots. He's bought another teleportation scroll. He's bought blades of attack. And now he's back in base because he has a spell called Return that channels for three seconds, has a 30 second cooldown, and brings him back to his uh, lone druid. So, really, really interesting the way this game is being played out right now. I. I, I love the build that he's going for, so he's gonna go for the Blightstone as well. The first item you always wanna buy on Lone Druid, I think this is like, no matter what build you are going for, the first item always has to be Phase Boots on the bear. I've tried to mess with this before myself, and I don't like the way it goes. I don't like when you have, uh, 
Like if you try to straight Radiance Rush, your bear is weaker, you have less kill potential. Uh, it, even if you get the Radiance at a perfect timing, it just does it's not that much better than if you were to get the phase boots first. And if you are to get the phase boots first, you're just more of a presence on the map. So uh, you can go Radiance, but I don't think he's gonna go Radiance. I'm pretty sure he's gonna go for the Mask of Madness into Desolator build and I, I really want to see it happen because I love that build. Last time I watched him play, he went for Radiance into AC. So we will we will see how it goes. Um, we'll see what he ends up doing. Now let's take a look here. Oh no, it looks like the Bat Rider's in some trouble. He manages to use his Flame Break to get himself away. Ooh, and the bear gets a root. Oh, I love this. Entangling, uh, entangling claws has a 20% chance and it, you get it at level one now. You used to be able to get this, I think, with level three spirit bear, but now you get it at level one. And these five, these five ironwood branches, man, I just love it. I love seeing this. It tanks up his hero because that's like, it tanks up his hero. It gives him more last hitting ability. Um, everything about this, I really, really like. By the way, the other benefit of your bear having a, his own teleportation scroll is that it's a super fast courier. You teleport him back to base, you can pick up your items, and your bear instantly has them. He also can just use his courier regularly, which he just did. But if you have the teleportation scroll available, sometimes it's worthwhile to do that. Um, Alright, let's see what's happening here. We'll take a quick look at other parts of the map, see what the matchups are like. I honestly didn't even check yet, I just kind of hopped into this game. We've got Puck against SF. We've got Crystal Maiden and Lifestealer, interesting, against Rubik and Magnus. Okay, so Magnus plus the bear will be really nice. Ooh, here we go. We got a fight going down. At level six, he's chosen to take two levels into Spirit Link. And actually, I found myself doing this quite a bit when I play because I feel like the Spirit Link is just so significant in terms of how much attack speed it gives you. An extra 15% plus the 35% shared lifesteal, it feels really nice. The 35% shared lifesteal, I really, uh, the 35% shared lifesteal, but the, the the attack speed is re what really, really gets me going because the bear feels like he attacks so slow for so long. Um, if you're taking a lot of pressure, you're gonna wanna take your true form, but you don't generally need it. Like if you're gonna be pushing a tower, maybe you'll take it. If you're in a big team fight and you haven't skilled it yet, you might wanna take it. But still, I think I like I like the spirit link and holding off on the true form. This is more for the mid game when you're ready. You need the 500 bonus HP and you're ready to turn yourself into a bear and fight with your bear. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And you can see Magnus here doing the same pulling trick that uh, Omni Knight was doing. And now watch how the watch the way that uh, Lone Druid micros this. Every time Omni Knight tries to get up close to the lane, Lone Druid is sending his bear forward and attacking the Omni Knight. Luckily for Omni Knight, he's got a double wave pushing, so he's gonna attack him and he's gonna deny the he's going to deny the creeps in front of Omni Knight because Omni Knight can't really get too close. If he gets too close, this phase bear now has phase boots and he can run at him. Oh, and he is choosing to go with the Radiance build instead of Mask of Madness and Desolator. So that's great because it means I'll be making another video later on how to go Mask of Madness and Desolator. But for now, we're going to talk about the Radiance build on the bear, which I think is still really, really, really good. Um, what is the range that your hero needs to be from your bear? 1100 units so 1100 units is like approximately like this much of a screen from here to like here or something like it's it's pretty far it's pretty far but it's 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 not the farthest and oh he has decided to go for boots on his lone druid as well so boots are the most important item on these heroes sometimes i do skip the boots on my lone druid and i always regret doing this because i can't keep up with my bear especially when he has phase boots i rely on him getting a root and <laughs> sometimes it just doesn't happen um so getting these boots on your on your lone druid is is pretty uh, fantastic and look at the farm that he's getting here like he's definitely out He's definitely getting really good farm. He's getting tons of denies. He's at 70 last hits, 18 denies. 18 denies is really big here. And instead of sitting here under tower and trying to deny in front of the Omni Knight, what he's gonna do is increase slash accelerate his farm by coming here, taking this camp, and then going back to this lane to catch up with these four. And since his 
bear has phase he can move them over here this way so his bear is going to attack the omni knight oh he's getting ganked his bear is going to attack the omni knight and his lone druid is going to try to last hit but unfortunately the shadow fiend has come and he's messed up his plans so the shadow fiend has come top so they can secure this top outpost so the bear won't be able to get it his team should probably be able to get the bottom outpost maybe be able to get the bottom outpost it looks like probably um but the top two or but the radiant team will be able to get the top outpost okay so back to how far along the way he is he, he's got boots multiple tangos uh a blight stone and quite a bit of farm lots of last hits he's had a very easy lane so far he teleports his bear back to heal he might pick up some items if he wants but basically this is a free send home and heal without having to respawn your bear what happens if you respawn your bear now respawning your bear does give you a fresh bear but if you respawn him and he dies then you are out of luck if you respawn him and you die you are out of luck your hero is basically a hundred percent useless for the time being while your bear exists so we're going to keep staying on excalibur i know stuff's happening around the, the map but i want to focus on his farming patterns what he's doing and where he's playing on the map how he plays this game out and he's ha he's having himself like exactly the type of game you want he's not getting a lot of kills because omni knight is very hard to kill and there haven't been a lot of opportunities to be honest but if there were opportunities to kill he would have been taking them taking advantage of them because he does have the phase boots now if you want help on how to micro your bear and micro your lone druid at the same time and learn other tips on how to micro i did just finish a video on microwing i haven't uh, by the time this is released that video will be released so check out the rest of the channel and you can see how to micro multiple units at the same time i go into like beastmaster lone druid how to use your necros how to use phantom lancers tricks uh how to do the blink poof on meepo i think i already said that how to how to farm with naga siren all kinds of stuff so that is your tips right there now this is a really cool thing that he just did i i want to talk about it but i'll talk about it after this fight is done no i'll talk about it now okay so the Omni Knight was trying to run away, and what he did, the second he rooted him, he rooted him, and then he feared him. He used, he, he Savage Roared him, which fears him. Now, why would he Savage Roar when Omni Knight's already rooted? It's because fear doesn't allow you to use any abilities at that point. He can't use any items, and he can't use any spells. He, he can't use any items or spells. He's just trying to run back to his base, but he's already rooted. So, if you fear somebody who's rooted and close to dying, it means that they can't use any abilities or ways to save themselves and now he used the savage roar again right there he in, is in his true form which gives him additional health did he spawn an extra bear he did spawn an extra bear so he has to be very careful right now if he dies this is so bad for his team but instead of dying they managed to turn this fight around and instantly this uh they smoke up their team right after that team fight and they're gonna go look to make more plays Ooh. All right, they might have seen that that was smoked because he broke it right there on that creep, but the chances that the enemy team was looking right here at that point in time are kind of low. I don't think he gave that away. He has at 12 minutes and 58 seconds right now. He has 2,400 gold, and he is pretty well on his way to his Radiance. He's got a very good timing going on, considering that he has no kills. He's super far. In, he's pretty high. I think he's pretty high at net worth. Let's see if... How he's doing on the net worth graph yep his top in net worth and there is an um what's that guy's name a shadow fiend in this game so that's really good for him now the crystal maiden looking around see if she can make something happen uh and excalibur is just gonna farm the jungle now he knows that it's dangerous over here the reason he's not pushing this tower some of you might be thinking that oh i need to be pushing this tower i should be pushing this tower should i turn fog on just for the radiant now i'm gonna keep fog on for everyone just so we can see everything right now we want to see all the map movements um uh, i think next time i do this though i'll put on fog for only the radiant for only the dire i'll put on fog only for only the dire that kind of makes most sense it, it, it wouldn't it doesn't make sense to keep fog on for only for everyone right now it, it wouldn't <laughs> okay so the the reason i i don't know what i was talking about whatever we're just gonna get back into this um oh, i'm so t so tempted to look over there uh, okay, so he's just going to keep going for his Radiance. Uh, he's controlling the top outpost. Oh, I know what I was going to talk about. The reason he's not pushing this tower. The reason he wasn't pushing this tower and he, the reason he might push this tower now 
and, and I couldn't speak on that before is because I had the fog of war uh, showing everyone is because he didn't know where the other units were on the map but right now he has indications that things are happening middle he knows that there's four to five heroes there which means that now he can push this tower but he sees a teleportation coming in the Omni Knight's coming and instead of staying here and fighting the Omni Knight which he could do he would be able to fight him and do a little bit of damage to him he knows that his goal is to try to get as much farm as possible so he goes straight to this camp but the shadow fiend shows up he uses the savage roar gets the shadow fiend out of here and now he's just gonna run to a jungle camp i assume or or somebody's gonna come top and try to help him defend this tower Ooh, this is a good play he comes over here with his bear because he knew the 15 minute mark was up and bears can pick up bounty rune so he tried to pick up the bounty rune now we have multiple heroes here trying to gank or trying to push his lane so this might be a little bit hard for him he sees a fight breaking out he'll probably go here and try to get in on this fight he no longer cares about the last hits he's got to get here as soon as possible but his bat rider has gone down so he's gonna back out he'll probably come over here to the high ground and he doesn't have enough heroes doesn't have enough heroes now this bot lane is pushing in so i think that the enemy team the radiant team is gonna have to react to the bot lane pushing in magnus doing a good job farming two lanes uh and they're gonna go for the tier one unfortunately i don't think they're gonna be able to get it oh instead of magnus pushing this tower he's gonna come and get ready to try to rp someone because he does have it available the bear uses savage roar to stop him from being able to do things uh, Magnus drops the RP. Bear is constantly attacking. There goes the Shadow Fiend. Let's see if he can get a root off again. And they are winning this team fight pretty handily. So much damage going down. Another root. Um, by the way, when his bear gets into when he, when his lone druid gets into bear mode or uh, true form <laughs> bear mode. When he goes into true form, he gets the abilities of his bear. He gets Entangling Claws and Demolish, which is pretty awesome. So at this point, he's got 3,800 gold. He's going to go send his... He's probably going to go with his courier or send his bear to the secret shop to pick up the uh, Sacred Relic. Or he'll just farm that way and send his bear. Uh, and then he'll wait for the Radiance to finish up. But the Sacred Relic is a 60 damage item, so the second you get it, it becomes really good on your on your bear. Oh, and check this out. Oh, he got a Groove Bow. I was kind of hoping he'd keep it on his Lone Druid, but he's going to leave it here for... Who is going to take that? Rubik? I don't know. He might want to take that. Oh, Puck. Puck's going to take it, obviously. So, uh... Here comes the here he goes attacking again with his main hero and his bear i'm not sure why he's tanking so much on his main hero he oh it's because his his main hero will t will heal while the bear attacks so he took a lot of that's really cool I, I haven't thought of doing that tanking some of the damage on your main hero because your bear is going to heal you through the shared lifesteal and i think the shared lifesteal is 10 percent by default right is that how it works what's their shared lifesteal I forget what it is. They got some kind of shared life still. I'm not going to look into it while we're going through this, but I'll definitely find out afterwards so I know what I'm talking about in the future. <laughs> uh, and he's now at 17 minutes, and he's only 300 gold away from his Radiance, looking very, very good. If he sees anyone down here, if he sees anyone down here, he has the opportunity to fight because he does have true form up again. He's going to take this outpost with his druid by the way i don't know if they fixed this but if you have your druid your bear try to take the outpost with you i thought maybe there was like a slight chance that your bear could help you take it double fast the way you can and when you have two heroes but what happens is your bear just starts attacking it your bear is like whoa screw this outpost and it doesn't work now he's playing in the bottom lane uh he feels kind of safe here they still have mid tower available lone druid sees stuff happening he's ready to tp in when you are tping in with your lone druid the way he gets his bear to get there instantly after is you want to time it the way you time it is by teleporting seeing how much time is left on your teleportation it'll say above you like uh, there's a little timer that shows up above you and once it drops below three seconds you press the q button on your bear to return because it takes him three seconds to return to you so uh wait for the especially if you teleport like if you tell another thing i should explain if you teleport more than one person to a tower it increases the time that it takes you to teleport there so the first person's three seconds the second person's five seconds 
Oh, and here is the Radiance. The Radiance is up, and now the bear is able to do... Oh, and he, the bear has Radiance and Empower from Magnus. Holy moly. So the bear can even split push right now if he wants to. And he's going to start pushing this tower. Notice that this tower, if he put more pressure on, he could have got this tower earlier. They would have had to rotate and commit more heroes. But the reason he has it, he's going for it at 20 minutes, is because this isn't that important of a tower to take in comparison to how important it is for him to get a radiance on this bear and now he just he used his savage roar on his bear this is actually such a good play he used his savage roar on his bear but life stealer used his rage so uh, he wasn't able to roar him away the second he saw that life stealer raged he tried to use his uh his return and now he raged or he roared him away because he didn't have it up and he returned his bear to base by teleporting so he's burned both teleportation scrolls but all of his heroes are safe even though his team has lost the team fight so this is a really really good play um let's see how many last hits he's is he at how's he doing on net worth last hits doing well looks like shadow fiend's really taking off current gold net worth all right shadow fiend is at the top of the net worth but that's kind of expected uh all right cool let's get rid of all of our game stats and let's go back to our druid uh back in the jungle he goes and at this point he's just going to try to get his next item which is going to be an assault caress now i uh i like this because i, I like I like this build and I like the Assault Caress because I like the way it synergizes with his talents. If you don't get the AC in a reasonable time, it doesn't synergize with his talents super well. Uh, if you don't go AC, it, you feel like your bear can die too easily because he doesn't have armor. And by the way, look where his bear is and look where his druid is. His bear is pushing waves that nobody's at and his druid's right here farming jungle. So he's, he's maximizing his efficiency by using his bear even though his bear can't attack because it's outside of that 1100 unit range that he's able to attack in and they have smoked up now they know that the they know that the bear is here he's just keeping units around him and he'll continue to push the wave this way omni knight's gonna do the same thing but with his whole body but what this allows him to do is be here for this fight teleport his bear whereas this uh this omni knight he actually has to come so here they go, they get a smoke engage off on the life stealer, they get the pickup, and this game is looking really nice right now because they are going to be able to take this tier 2 mid most likely. Uh, they have a wave, right? Yeah, they have a wave. I think they're going to go for this tier 2 mid. Oh, uh, their wave got cleared out, so I guess they won't. I guess they're just going to go back top. He's going to use his bear to continue, creep, or continue cutting waves, which is again the play that you want to make when you get the radiance and you can teleport your bear back to yourself you just don't want to get your your bear killed multiple times doing this like you have to pay attention to where it is and this is how you push multiple uh multiple lanes and where's his bear gonna go right now he's coming right back to him and he's gonna help him farm out because he cleared out these waves there's nothing much else to do his team took the top tower and he's looking good he's looking good uh, okay, so the AC and his talents back to that I think I said what I wanted to say But the AC gives you the armor so you don't necessarily need to go with the spirit bear armor If you don't get the a if you don't get the AC then it feels like your spirit bear needs armor super bad because he dies Relatively easily another really cool thing about lone druid is now that there's so many jungle items It feels really great to be able to dump off all the extra items in the game onto this lone druid So let's say somebody found like a uh, I don't know like there was a dragon scale and uh, a groove bow and you didn't have any other ranged hero on your team you can just throw it on this guy he's like uh, he just holds all all of the jungle items instead of them sitting here in base uh like i'm sure this team no they don't they don't have any sitting in base but eventually you know those items get go into base so instead of that they can go on to your second hero you have an additional six slots to work with uh, and these these are just so great just used for freaking keeping your hero alive notice once the fight starts he uses his true form true form cannot be dispelled while it starts happening so if you start pressing it uh no matter what's going on you will finish be being true form yeah i guess that makes sense <laughs> i hope we go far enough to see what he takes at his level 20 talent i think it's kind of a toss-up depending on how the game's going between entangled cooldown and a 40 second true sight and for minus 40 uh, second true form because true form is like in some games absolutely necessary to fight and some games you need the catch and you're fighting all some some games you need the catch for the entangle roots 
and you're only fighting around certain ultimates where where the uh the other talent the zero second entangle cool time entangle cooldown really really helps you out uh by default entangling claws has a five second cooldown so zero seconds is like you can hit him hit him hit him he's like oh shit i've been rooted i've been rooted i've been rooted and suddenly unrooted you're good to go our bat rider is why am i looking at the bat rider don't pay attention to the bat rider don't pay attention to the bat rider all right where is he gonna tp so he tp's bottom and they want to start playing over here he's here with the bear they catch the lone that's why i was looking at the bat rider because i knew that they were gonna make a play over here and even if this shadow fiend wanted to get away he's got phase boots and he's got radiance so he'd get burned the whole time he'd never be able to get away now the bear <coughs> <laughs> excuse me now the bear who has multiple teleportation scrolls on him look where he is he's in the top lane because he's gonna push it this gets oh man this is why the radiance is so good this is why it's so good he also gets the bounty ruin so just such a good play this is such a good play he just secured his team this outpost the bounty well he would have secured the outpost but he, he, they've kept the outpost they got the bounty ruin they pushed out a little bit of the wave i don't know if he pushed out the whole wave i think that they did no but like it did some damage to the wave and then he brought him right back if that tiny was gonna try to take the outpost he could use savage roar on him he could slow him down waste his time and now he sees a fight ready to happen, so he goes true form right away. True form gives him the extra 1500 health, and it is beautiful. Um, really love the way he's playing right now. It's it's uh, it's great to watch. It's great to watch a good lone druid play. Now, a lot of you might, a lot of you have, are a lot of people that I've played lone druid with. This this is typically what I hear in my games, and it's I never win with lone druid on my team. This is understand an understandable feeling to have. He's a hard hero to play. It's hard to have people who know how to micro, and it's even harder to know how to move around the map with this hero. Like it's really hard to be good. And, oh, the other, and it's hard not to lose your bear twice. Sometimes you just get in situations where you're like, how do I stop losing this bear? They just keep killing my bear, or they just keep killing my druid. When it works, it works well. When you have a good lone druid on your team it's phenomenal if you have the opportunity to i want you to try to be like excalibur the rank one player <laughs> i forget what server he's on but he's rank one somewhere <laughs> so be like him uh play well and just copy the way he's played now he's sitting on the buckler for the ac he's gonna hold on to it on his main hero and look at that they dumped off the poor man's shield because it's seven agility for him so they dumped it back onto him and they see a they see heroes trying to push top they're gonna run this way they want to try to get a pick off bat rider unfortunately does not have a blink dagger yet does he have it being brought to him i don't know but is fast enough to get the get the catch on the life stealer somehow they got the catch on the life stealer a quickening charm who's this going to be put on it'll probably replace one of these iron branches unless bat rider wants it of course of course you do you greedy bat and uh looking good how close is he to the assault caress what did he buy? Oh, no, I, I clicked on the bear and it didn't update my gold count. By the way, notice that the gold count is broken here at the bottom. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> uh, updated, updated the bear. Ugh. I'm trying to say something. Ooh, he found a paladin sword. Oh my gosh. Okay, the reason paladin sword is so great on, on Excalibur, on his bear, and look again, he's tanking with his lone druid. The, the reason the paladin sword is so great is because they have shared lifesteal and this provides 17 percent lifesteal so as he's attacking this bear or as he's attacking roshan with his bear he's not losing health he's going up in hp overall and who do they give the ages to they give it to puck because to be honest the bear is not going to die like and if he dies he's if he dies and has an aegis but has no bear it's kind of useless on him so i really like giving it to your puck uh your mid player instead right there instead of your safe lane carry i think is that that is the better person to give the aegis to oh and a little bit of lag comes through but that's okay who's the sav or the savage roar fearing off the shadow fiend they're still trying to make it happen they don't have vision of him right now, but they hopefully will soon. He roars him again. They get the vision back. He got glimmered, and now he tosses the bear away. He tosses him into 
LC. Oh, and LC is gonna make the kill happen on him. LC. I mean, life stealer. LS. LS is gonna make the kill happen. That was actually pretty nice by uh, by Tiny. So I guess they have overextended. They have overextended on the map. They thought that they had the team fights under control, and they have come. Back. So we're gonna go ahead and put fog of war on for both teams. I'm gonna check out what items and builds everyone else is going while they're dead. The life stealer is going radiance. Radiance, uh, desol or sorry, not radiance. Armlet desolator and his reaver is gonna be for a what next? Is he building a heart or a satanic? We'll see. Crystal maiden is going glimmer cape and building a. Uh, this is a Lotus Orb next. Omni Knight has Solar Crest, which is really nice with Life Stealer and Shadow Fiend and Tiny. Uh, has a Helm of the Dominator. I love Helm of the Dominator. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And uh, Tiny has Blink and Glimmer Cape. The Glimmer is very interesting on Tiny. A very, very interesting build. Uh, and the opponent, Shadow Fiend, has, is going Magic Damage into Ethereal Blade. So he's going Magic Damage Shadow Fiend with the Yule Scepter. Uh, these are all top ranked players, obviously, if they're in this game, so I trust all of their decisions, but I don't like the magic damage Shadow Fiend very much, to be honest. Uh, now, let's see how he goes. He's got his AC completed, and he's still got the Paladin Sword, so they're smoked up. They're trying to make a play happen. Bat Rider has so many items right now, it's hilarious. Uh, don't be fooled uh, by the score. I am very sure that the Dire team is in the lead right now. At least, I think the Dire team is in the lead right now. <laughs> Our lone druid only has one kill at the moment, but that's okay. Ooh, this could be a bad fight. Roars him, gets the RP off, they get a kill out. He ends up getting the 200 gold from killing the dominated creep. So Omni Knight dies, Crystal Maiden dies, the fight starts well. The, what the heck was that? The Rubik stole the Requiem. And he's just fighting away from his bear. He tries to use the Savage Roar. Unfortunately, he's not able to. They see the Tiny. Tiny's probably going to get away. Now they've lost Puck and they've lost Batrider. So, uh, oh, that's not so good. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see how this is going to go from here on out. Because losing the Puck is pretty rough. 75 seconds down. But the Puck is starting to get items. She's got the Desolator. Has the Groove Bow. By the way, did you know that if you get Enchanted Quiver... Okay. This is just an aside. Did you know that if you get Enchanted Quiver on Puck, uh, it gives him, like, unlimited range on his phase shift attack? Where is Enchanted Quiver? Right here. So it says, empower your next attack with 270 bonus magical damage and true strike. Range attackers have plus 400 bonus range for that attack. So if you have a Desolator, a Daedalus, and a group bow, no, yeah, not a group bow, and an enchanted quiver, you have an additional 400 range on everything near you when you phase shift. It's freaking nuts. Like, when you see it happen, you're just, you think that the game is broken. You're like, what, what's, what went wrong here? Oh, he's gonna try to wreck him on top of him. Uh, the, the lone druid has quite a bit of health. He manages to roar them away, but the life stealer has the roar, or the rage and the ability to kill him, and they take down the lone druid. Oh, things are looking rough now. The game was in their favor, but he doesn't have buyback, and he wants that BKB on his bear next. They're doing quite a bit of damage to him. The bear is not doing enough. Uh, even with the empower, I actually thought they were going to be able to do enough. Shadow Fiend has gone down. Crystal Maiden is going to die to the Puck. Puck manages to get away, and they do lose their Magnus. Tiny blinks in with the Avalanche Toss combo. Trying to get away. Phase shift attacks. Being burnt by the spirit vessel, wanting rifts forward. <coughs> Let's see if Puck gets away. Jaunts out of position or out of there. Comes forward, silences him, blinks away. He gets another spirit vessel down. He's gonna go over this cliff. Oh, he tried to go over this cliff. And Puck will be safe. So I think Puck has to go home or I don't know. I don't know what else Puck is gonna do. But Puck really wants to finish the Agnums off, which kind of makes sense considering how much. 
uh, how many BKBs they have and the fact that they have a life stealer. So life stealer did end up finishing the satanic. That makes sense. 30 the 30% status resistance, the 25 damage, and the 25 strength. This item is super good. The 30% status resistance is just like a, a holy moly. A holy moly. I do like Basher on this hero like quite a bit. I, I mean Abyssal. And actually it looks like that's what he's going for next, but he is a professional guys and by professional i mean one of the best in the world um okay the lone druid oh hi kitty lone druid where are you gonna go you are just going to continue farming i think that he's just gonna try to stay in the jungle until they're ready for their next team fight i don't know if they need a smoke available to do that but we'll see how he decides to play it out he'll push the wave top uh and we're gonna go back to fog of war so We see only what the dire sees. Now, okay, I, I got a cat coming up. Okay. So I'll be casting the rest of this game with my cat because she loves me and I love her. We're best friends. <coughs> Huck gets the coil off on the life stealer. And now coil is just on cooldown for 60 seconds. That coil did not work out very well, but I don't think they're planning on fighting for the next minute anyways. So let's see what happens after lone druid doesn't have a lot that he can do at this moment he's gonna go push the top wave with his bear again using the radiance he just sits here pushes things out he can bring the bear back if he thinks the fight's getting ready to break out which it is so i'm sure that he's bringing the bear back where's the bear oh the bear's already in here and the fight has begun he's attacking he uses the savage roar again uh it's just not enough damage coming out. Puck is throwing down quite a bit. He wants to get a root off. There goes Puck with the silence. The bear has been using the phase boots consistently. You have to use the phase boots on your bear. And where's the druid? The druid's sitting right behind him. They're chasing down the shadow fiend. Fears him, so he can't use any items or spells. Now he yules himself directly after. The bear is starting to get low on health. Excalibur has another bear in three seconds. He will use it. And he's going to continue to chase down. Watch him use the phase boots right now. All right. Watch him use the phase boots when he needs to. Use the phase boots. Don't make me look like a freaking fool. All right. I look like a fool. There he goes. Now he uses the phase boots. <laughs> oh my gosh. That healing on that life stealer is just unbelievable. Oh no. And their puck is dead. Puck is their core mid puck right now and he only has one damage dealing item that's pretty rough uses another savage roar this team is no longer ahead i think even when i said that they were ahead i might have been wrong i'm pretty sure i was wrong and this guy is dead he's dead for 88 seconds this game might have just ended because it, it even if lone druid by oh it didn't end but this game has just turned pretty big time his team has less than a 1k lead but if lone druid buys back right now there's nothing he can do fortunately for them they did kill the shadow fiend i mean and omni knight is dead so it's not as bad as i'm making it out to seem but i don't know i felt like i felt like the the fight that they lost here while they had the chance to win that fight the fact that it got turned around just really really hurt them if they were able to win this fight they would have been able to get control of this tower and then they probably would have been able to get control of either top tower or go high ground um but that fight the tiny with the epic play of having a freaking glimmer cape <laughs> managed to save himself and then toss the bear back didn't play an awesome all right rubik has a blink an ags an aether lens and tranquil boots our Magnus has Blink and Echo Saber, BKB, Spider Legs. I like it. I like it. And he's going to go for a daddy list, a data list, a daddy, daddy, data list. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, I was going to say, this is a dangerous position to be in if you're a Magnus. I was surprised he stayed there because if the tiny blinked forward, he could have just tossed him back on top of the CM and CM could have rooted him. So, that was dangerous. Oh, they get the, uh, they get the, uh all of the spells off on life stealer who tried to save him there what a beautiful attempt at a save he shot him with an ethereal blade but unfortunately the tiny is going to pay for that shoot uh who had the dust man what a heads up play by excalibur carrying his own dust Double kill. 
That is incredible, man. For a core to know that he has extra item slots and he should carry a dust like that. I don't even know when he bought that dust, but I am I am heads up impressed. And now he's at the bottom lane. They're going to push in, go to the high ground. They're going to try to force buybacks. They have to... I think that they have to buy back against this bear. I don't think that they can afford not to. Especially because they both have demolished, so they both do so much damage to the tower. Yeah, there they go. They throw their buybacks. Excalibur is going to be happy about that. So is the top lad. They're going to be happy about that. They take the middle tower. I, maybe they'll try for one more. They'll try to force the life stealer to buy back. They don't know whether he has it or not, and he now does. He didn't have it three seconds ago. Five seconds ago, six seconds ago, seven seconds ago, eight seconds. Um, <laughs> and Magnus just continuing to empower things. By the way, guys, Magnus players, empower is not a spell only for you. I know they buffed it on you, but it, it, buff your buff your teammates, man. Just buff them. Just do it. Give them a little old buffer, you know. And Roche respawns just now. Holy, what a good timing for them. They get a Roche on. He's gonna use that old. Lifesteal regeneration trick to not have to lose any health on the bear So he's got the paladin sword. He's also got freaking vampire fangs. Oh my gosh These are like some of the best items he could have come up with like what more do you want than vampire fangs and a paladin sword? <laughs> Man. Oh It's so good it's so good. I don't like it though. I don't like I don't like that he's having he, that he has better items than he would in another game. It makes it feel weird. I don't like the RNGness of it. I think that the way that the neutral shop should work is that these guys should drop a token and then when you go back to your shop or just globally, you should be able to exchange that token for any one of these neutral items you just come into this shop and you select which neutral item you want to use instead of having it be a random drop because some are just better than others and it feels stupid to get them in the... i i mean it feels stupid to see a bear a bear with a paladin claw and vampire fangs when his it synergizes so, just so well with this spirit link the 65 percent shared life steal oh man but whatever, I, 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 I'm not I'm not raging about the game. So the bear went for a BKB next, and BKB is an item I didn't like picking up on the bear for a while. Not that I didn't like it. It's it's like when you first start playing Dota. Like, oh, hold on, let's watch the scope go down. Omni Knight using his ultimate life stealer, throwing down some spells let's see how this plays out puck coming forward a little bit of phase shift they're hitting the bear a little bit they don't go for it life stealer continuing to attack the bear is he going to open wounds him again he does open wounds on the bear he has another savage roar ready puck managing to get the dream coil down wanting rift forward gets the phase shift attack off coming forward <laughs> coming forward this is really nice <coughs> excuse me the ethereal blade play was was really cool and they're gonna get the life stealer as well so the life stealer can't attack they fear him and the life stealer has no choice but to buy back Ooh, this is looking this is looking hard man this is looking hard oh is this actual attacker playing oh they're, they're talking trash actually <laughs> uh, and they're gonna be able to take mid tower so quickly puck has the desolator uh, reducing the damage and he's got the agnums now he's also got a minotaur horn Gets the RP off on the life stealer, manages to kill him, and that is going to be the game. So this is your ideal build. And the next item, by the way, is the Abyssal Blade on the bear. Abyssal Blade on bear is ridiculous strong, like just ridiculous. It's not, I mean, Abyssal Blade has just got so much better since the last patch, since it's now, an, or since 7.23, now that it became an active that actually lets you like, blink strike someone basically and also stun them and cancel tps and all that good stuff abyssal blade has become amazing let's take a look at his stat line over here we're gonna look at lone druid his bear and his items he's got the vampire fangs he's got the paladin sword the two items you would want all looking great gold per minute looking nice 6p per minute a lot of hero damage um quite a bit of building damage as well he was the ninth pick in the draft this is funny. How does how was he pick eleven and he was pick twelve? 
This is so funny. So, obviously, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, holy moly, I don't care. We'll fa it's because it's Spirit Bear. Something's bugged with the Spirit Bear counting as two people or something. But to go all the way up to 12, like, it should just stop at 11 because there's no 10th. Well, his 10th pick would have been his bear, but that doesn't make sense because it, it just doesn't add up. It's not adding up. Something's missing there. Uh, okay, and his spirit build. So he went, again, one in spirit bear, two in spirit link bear, roar, bear, link at level six instead of true form, bear, link, true form when he felt like he needed it, link again, and then he got his health and finished off the rest of his spells. So looking beautiful. He obviously went with the talents that we talked about. Oh, he took the minus 40 second true form talent that we were talking about. And at level 25, the minus 0.25 uh, spirit bear attack time. I didn't notice him get there, but very cool. Awesome. I think that is it, guys. Holy moly. That was my uh, my first full game replay analysis guide on a hero i hope i hope that there was a lot to learn from that game i noticed I, I definitely learned a couple new things um i'm very happy that i went through that whole game i hope you enjoyed it my name is navitz i stream on twitch.tv slash navitz you can check out my youtube channel as well hope you guys enjoyed and i'll be back for the next one see you later